Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar, Add Pro to Your FM Career with the Pro FM Credential. So thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon or this morning or this evening, wherever you might be in the world. Uh, we'll begin the webinar content shortly, but before we do, I'd just like to go over a few technical notes. Uh, first, this session will be recorded. Everyone in attendance will receive an email within five days with both a link to the recorded session and access to an electronic version of the slides. Second, this event will include a live question and answer session at the end. To submit questions at the bottom of your screen, kind of in the center, there's a Q&A panel. Uh, please uh, enter your questions there and we'll get to as many of those as we possibly can. If we don't get to those, uh, we will follow up uh, within the next few days with answers to, the, to those questions. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Randy Olson. I'm the VP of Global Business Development for the Professional Facility Management Institute. And I have overall responsibility for the design, des development, and distribution of the ProFM Credential Program. And then I'm uh, very happy and honored to welcome Dale Wenger to the, uh, to the session today. And Dale will be our, our uh, technical presenter. And Dale's uh, background has, has more than 35 years of experience in the FM profession across operations and maintenance, project management, vendor management, and integrated facility management services. Through his career, he's worked with Merck, Owens Corning Fiberglass, JLL, Aramark, ABM, and Vanguard. Dale is also an adjunct instructor for Villanova um, in their College of uh, Continuing Studies and is a ProFM instructor and will be leading the ProFM Coach Self-Study Program, which kicks off on July 8th. So with that, I'd like to welcome you to the uh, session today, Dale, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, so just a little roadmap about where we're going. So we're going we're gonna to talk briefly, um, and this is a topic, you know, Dale and I were just talking before the session. Uh, we're going to talk about change here a little bit. And this is a topic we could spend the rest of the week talking about, given uh, kind of where we're at in the world right now. But we'll talk a little bit about change. We're going to share some stats from a recent uh, training outlook survey from Building Operating Management Magazine. Dale's going to walk into um, the ProFM body of knowledge and really identify those knowledge and skills required of facility managers today. And then um, looking at the ProFM body of knowledge, what are those 24 things that every FM should know? So we'll dig into that. We'll talk to the benefits for employers and professionals of the ProFM. We'll talk about uh, the steps to getting the ProFM and elevating your, your skill set. And then at the end, we'll talk about um, a special offer today. And we'll, as I mentioned, work through any questions that, that may, be, uh, may be upcoming. So with that, um, I'd like to just talk a little bit about change. And when we delivered this webinar back in January, um, this was certainly a different discussion, right? So, uh, you know, we talked a lot about technical change and the advancement of, of uh, IoT and, um, you know, really the advancement of technology, the abundance of data, the uh, propagation of predictive analytics and robotics and automation, and how complex that was for the facility manager to work through. Um, then you then you take that and you put it through the lens of what we've dealt with over the past four months with a global pandemic and um, how that's uh, really prompted change. You know, it's change in, you know, in how we clean and how we provide access to the facilities. Um, and it's changed both technically or it really changed the career in the industry technically, but also it really changes in how you, um, really innovate, how you collaborate with other departments, so kind of those soft skills, and then probably most importantly, how you effectively communicate um, across your organization and really become a business leader in your organization to really help move the organization through this um, interesting time that we're in and into the next phase. If you kind of look at where we're at and where this could potentially go, we're probably going to end up in, in some form of a uh, of a hybrid work environment where it's some remote, it's some shared space, and then it's um, then you, it, it's your corporate office facility. And to work through how to manage most effectively that asset, the financial implications around that, 
you know, that uh, the career has certainly not gotten any less complex. Um, you know, the Pro-FM, as we'll talk about, is, is uh, here and available to help you get prepared to address and critically think through all those issues. Um, so with that, I'd like to, uh, to talk a little bit about a uh, recent survey done by Building Operating Management Magazine um, that really outlines um, some key stats as it relates to um, facility management in the industry. And what it tells us is that 84% of employers say there's a gap between um, the FM skills and knowledge their teams require and what, and what they currently possess. So, um, you know, clearly there's an issue and a, um, and, a, and a skills gap as identified by employers. And then that same survey identified the top knowledge and skills requirements for FMs and employers uh, from an employer standpoint and what their employees um, in the facility management industry should possess. And at the top of that list is compliance and standards. Second, as I talked about, is communication. How do we effectively communicate across the organization? More and more FMs are leaders in the organization. So those leadership skills are necessary and critical um, as we move forward. Project management, environmental health and safety, this certainly hasn't gotten any uh, less complex and any less um, important to the organization. Contract management, emergency management, and then last but certainly not least, technical services. So that survey, survey identified those eight uh, really top skill and knowledge requirements. And then last out of that survey, FM professionals feel like that they could, they could use more FM knowledge, skills, and training in their current position. Uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, have Dale speak to how credentials could make an impact. And thank you, Randy. And um, the thing we want to focus on here um, this afternoon uh, or uh, evening, wherever you are, as Randy mentioned before, um, is when you have credentials, uh, they set a, stand, uh, a global standard uh, of knowledge and skills. Everybody's on the same platform, and so you you, you speak the you speak the same um, the same uh, language. In addition to that, it brings uh, a team um, uh, together in their knowledge and and skills. Um, that way, they're they're using the same skills to solve problems and and tackle the the issues that come to them on a on a day to day basis. And certainly from a professional uh, standpoint, um, an individual has uh, uh, the opportunity to update and expand their technical knowledge and um, increase the uh, on-the-job performance. Uh, it gives you examples on, on how to do things. It gives you um, details in areas that you might not have the experience necessary that's, uh, that you need to handle a problem. So that, that certainly is a, a, a big bonus of the, of the Pro-FM uh, program. And then um, the lastly, and, and really what I've seen over, over my career is it prepares uh, individuals to move on. Um, I think many of us have uh, career aspirations to, to move on and, and take on more roles as, uh, as uh, our, our careers advance. And uh, having this platform of um, uh, the Pro-FM credential uh, allows that to happen. Randy? All right. Thank you, Dale. So before Dale gets into the, uh, the technical and the uh, components of the Pro-FM and the cross-functional competency areas of the Pro-FM, I'd like to talk just briefly about um, how we arrived at these 24 things. So um, we did a, a global survey off to tens of thousands of facility management professionals asking them the key knowledge, skills, and abilities required um, to complete their job today and then into the future what those knowledge, and skill, knowledge skills, and abilities may be. And as a result of that survey, um, we got um, thousands of responses to it. 40% uh, of those responses came from outside the U.S. across um, you know, 93 different countries. 
Um, there were 12, over 1,200 unique FM job titles that across 21 different industries. So this knowledge um, and this, this data was really acquired really cr across almost every, in, uh, every industry that, that is represented. Um, there were over 1,800 unique employers and of the questions we asked them, 95% uh, of those folks came back and said that draft set of body of knowledge topics that you put in front of us, um, that matches what we do on a daily basis. So that formed really the basis and the roadmap for the development of the ProFM body of knowledge of which Dale is going to take us through now. And Dale, as we go, if you want to just prompt me to move to the next slide, I'm happy to do so, but I am now turning this over to you. Okay. As Randy mentioned uh, just previously, um, ProFM uh, delivers uh, the 24 uh, key aspects of, uh, of items that every FM should, uh, should know. Uh, it provides the, the knowledge, skills, abilities, and, and behaviors required for uh, facility managers to be successful. Um, and really what it also focuses on, it, it gives you the knowledge, but not only that, it helps you to apply that knowledge and, and to, uh, to put that uh, information that you have from a book into use um, on your, um, uh, in a daily, uh, daily basis. So these, um, the, the chart that you see there, uh, it represents the, uh, the book of knowledge for the, uh, the Pro-FM. And uh, you'll see that it's divided into four functional um, knowledge areas. And then uh, a fifth area that is really cross-functional across uh, all, of the, um, um, all of the knowledge areas. So Randy, if you can move to the next slide. And we'll, um, uh, we'll talk through each of the, the four major uh, knowledge areas um, right now. And the first one is operations and maintenance. Uh, and as I've been in my, uh, um, I'll say, career of uh, educating uh, FMs, um, oftentimes this is the one where FMs come in with the most experience. Not always, but many times. And um, so the, the, the topics that, that are uh, dealt with here are, are more the technical services, the, the occupant services, uh, helping um, people to um, uh, have a good work environment. So those uh, many times are re referred to as, as soft services. In addition, um, this area uh, deals with work management dealing with uh, computerized maintenance management uh, systems and, and uh, not necessarily a specific system, but really the need to make sure that you're managing your work properly and, and keeping it under control and, and making sure that you're working, uh, working efficiently. In addition, um, it has a, a segment on utility management. And again, in this, uh, in this day and age where sustainability is a uh, very key aspect of a facility manager's uh, life. Uh, it, it helps you focus on, on uh, ways to be um, uh, efficient and uh, uh, look at different metrics across the, uh, the industry to help you uh, make better decisions. And then lastly, the, um, this particular topic also includes space management. Are you using uh, the space to its, um, its uh, the most efficient manner. And, you know, as Randy alluded to earlier on, uh, I think we're all now going to be in a, in a learning mode as we uh, start to re-engage the workplace um, and uh, people coming, coming back. What, what space are they coming back to? How are we going to manage that? And so that, uh, that is certainly a key aspect of operations and maintenance. Randy, next slide, please. The next uh, topic is asset management. And so, um, you know, it's the, as it's defined there, it's a coordinated activity of an organization to realize value from assets. Uh, assets are expensive and um, you want to make sure that you're using them efficiently. They're not duplicate. Um, they're, they're taken care of uh, in a, in a well-maintained ma uh, well manner. Uh, and so those are, the, those are the types of things that, that are, are part of um, uh, asset management. I'm going to... Um, 
as, as we talk about the, the various topics in, in um, asset management, I'm going to go out of order here a little bit. I'm going to start with strategic planning first, because really that's, you really need to understand um, where the organization is going as a whole. And, um, and then from that, then you can build a, um, a, a strategic plan for your FM organization. And that may include uh, projects, it may include different facilities, um, renovation of, of existing facilities, all of those things then come into um, the next topic is uh, which would be capital planning. So how do I get the, the, uh, the resources I need from a financial perspective? How do I sell a, uh, sell a project that the organization may need? That's, that's all part of um, the asset management uh, topic. And then um, the next area is uh, project management. Once I have the, the assets approved by, by the overall um, organization that I, that I support, um, I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm managing that, that project in a, in a good way. So this, this um, uh, curriculum deals with, with project management. It doesn't get into the level of detail that, that uh, you know, a, a, a PMP type course would, but it gives you the, the basics of how to manage, uh, manage projects. And then of course, it also um, deals with uh, construction and how to um, manage a construction project, uh, how to put a schedule together, how to manage a schedule and make sure that the uh, project would be uh, delivered, uh, delivered on time on, um, on cost. Next slide, please. Next area is uh, risk management. And uh, as FMs, we're constantly identifying and analyzing um, uh, risks that, that come our way. Uh, we're treating them in different manners based on the, the, uh, the risk levels that we, um, that we identified that are associated with those, uh, those risks. And um, within that um, area of of study is uh, uh, four areas. Uh, one is uh, compliance and standards. And the compliance and standards um, would uh, deal, with, deal with more of the, the regulatory uh, aspects of uh, what a facility manager has to deal with, the, the area having jurisdiction uh, in, in the local um, municipalities that uh, you may be working in. In addition to that, there's uh, environmental health and safety. Uh, I, as uh, Randy alluded to, I, I worked in uh, the pharmaceutical industry for a uh, an extended period of time, and and um, EH and EH and S was a big part of my world. And so um, this uh, this curriculum helps you to to understand the the necessary um, requirements uh, that you have to have in place to ensure that worker Workers are work, uh, are safe, and that they um, they go home um, in the same or better shape than they came into work uh, that particular day. In addition to risk management, there's security, and uh, security uh, is also uh, it takes on two uh, aspects. Primary primarily a physical security is what we think of, but in addition to that, there's also um, um, cyber security. Uh, workplace uh, workplace violence uh, deals uh, is dealt with in this uh, particular topic as well, and then uh, the uh, lastly is uh, emergency management, and emergency management is uh, is a very broad topic, and um, it really uh, the curriculum really helps you to understand and identify ways to um, manage uh, risk. Uh, or manage emergencies that, that may come your way, how to, uh, how to mitigate them, um, develop response plans, and then also uh, recovery and uh, business continuity aspects of, um, of emergency management as well. Next slide, please. And lastly um, is business management. In, um, in today's uh, environment, um, Facility managers uh, 
need to be more than just uh, the people that are fixing things. They need to understand the business. Um, facility management is uh, a multi-billion dollar business that, um, that from a financial perspective, uh, an individual needs to understand how to um, uh, deal with uh, financial um, reporting, uh, make sure that it's accurate and that um, it is um, detailed enough to allow um, management to make decisions. And so those are uh, aspects of, of business management that are, are dealt with in, um, in, in this particular uh, aspect of the curriculum. In addition, it also talks about human capital. How do we interact with, with, uh, with employees? How do we interact with, with peers? How do we, how do we interact with, uh, with those um, that we report to? Um, in addition, it helps us develop our, our leadership skills and um, to be leaders in the, in, uh, in the facility management uh, industry, leaders in our organizations. As uh, um, Randy uh, mentioned earlier, that is, that is one of the, the key aspects that, that um, facility managers are now viewed as leaders within organizations. Um, we're managing um, most times the, the second costliest um, uh, as, um, a assets uh, or um, expenditures in within an organization, uh, being real estate and uh, and facilities, and so we need we need to make sure that we we understand um, those uh, those aspects and and our our leaders and setting the good the good example. In addition, um, we deal with, uh, from a business perspective, dealing with contract management, uh, procurement, real estate, all of those, all of those things. While it may not be the 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 primary function of a facility manager, we need to understand how those uh, how those aspects work within an organization and how we need to interact with them to to make sure that our organizations run in a in a smooth, effective, and efficient manner. Next slide, please. So we went through the four um, main um, areas uh, in the in the circle uh, representing the the pro FM body of knowledge, and now we'll deal with the the uh, the cross functional competencies. And these these cross functional competencies you'll see them in all of the other four um, uh, four areas. And so. Um, these are the, you know, the skills, the knowledge, the abilities, the personal traits that we have to bring to, um, to, the, um, uh, to the organization uh, on, a, uh, on a daily basis. And these, these topics are, um, are um, as you can see, they're, they're communication, sustainability, quality, innovation, and collaboration. You can't be a good uh, facility manager if if you're not communicating you know, on a peer level, on a uh, 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 on a level that, that individuals report to you, or or in a level where you need to influence managers that are in the organization uh, that you may report to. So communication again goes across all of those um, items. Innovation again, we need to be innovative as facility managers. Oftentimes we're cost we're asked to reduce costs, so we need to understand how we can apply innovation to do things. Uh, I just simply use the term better, faster, cheaper. And, um, and cheaper might give you a, a bad connotation, but I think you understand what, what I'm trying to say there. So that innovation is a, is a, big, uh, is a big aspect of, of all of, the, all of the, um, the different areas as well. Next slide, please. So we talked... Um, a little bit more, uh, or a little earlier, we talked about the uh, benefits to uh, the organization and to you uh, individually, but um, uh, certainly the, the benefits that we have uh, uh, from these, uh, from this uh, curriculum and this uh, credential is it, it formalizes requirements. Um, you know, it, it, it uh, goes through the, the items and the skill sets that you need to have and those that are defined by um, the ISO um, 
41,000 uh, standard, and um, also the um, um, the federal. Um, uh, uh, I'm lost. Yeah, the Federal Building uh, Personal Personnel Training Act that was uh, put into uh, uh, put into effect. It also um, helps you evaluate uh, potential candidates and current staff for training opportunities and advancements. Uh, it provides uh, opportunities for training for for helping uh, your team to move forward in in, uh, in their skill set as well. Communication. Again, I talked a little bit earlier about um, creating a common language within your uh, your FM team and across um, um, uh, different um, peers that you may have uh, outside of your particular organization that you bounce uh, bounce ideas off of. So you're you're all speaking the the uh, same uh, language. And then, of course, the last uh, the last benefit to the organization is is uh, performance. So it gives um, again the, your your team the skill set they need to do their job in a better in a better way. So now we have uh, the next slide is a as a testimonial. I'll just uh, we'll just pause here and let you uh, read that one. And now we move to the benefits uh, for FM professionals. And uh, I'm, I can imagine that uh, uh, based on the amount of participants on this, uh, on this webinar, that there uh, are people that are early in their career, uh, mid-career, and even late in, in, um, in your career. So early in career, the benefits are certainly you're going to build new, new FM skills. You're going to gain the, the recognition with employers, clients, and coworkers. When you have that credential, you're letting people know that you understand the industry, that you understand what it takes to, to um, you know, efficiently run an organization, uh, efficiently run a, um, a facility. Uh, again, um, in mid-career, you're, um, you're filling in some knowledge and, and skill gaps that, that you may have had over, over your career. Um, sometimes uh, we, get in, we get into a certain, a certain industry and, and that's the, the one that we are most um, uh, comfortable with. As I mentioned, I was in the um, uh, pharmaceutical industry for quite a while. So that's what I knew best, but now I've been able to branch out and use other things, uh, get other um, uh, experiences as well. And then uh, senior career, um, you're updating and validating the knowledge that you've gained over your, uh, over your years. And one more a testimonial. And then Randy, it's uh, back to you. Yeah, thanks very much, Dale. So I'd like to wrap up the, uh, the presentation with talking about how you get it. So really a, uh, a simple five-step process of invest, assess, enhance, check, and earn. So with the Pro-FM Credential Program, um, it's delivered as an all-in-one program, and it's delivered um, really in, in, the, in the fashion of um, you can take this in bite-sized chunks. So it's, it's, it's put together such that take a piece, assess where you're at, go on to the next, the next part of the program, assess where you're at, and systematically move through the program. So that's the design. And it's really three unique parts that are integrated together. Uh, to deliver this all-in-one program. And the first of those is reading materials. So as Dale went through that body of knowledge, there's four functional areas. Uh, so there's a module for each one of those functional areas. And then there's a module for those cross-functional competencies. So if you're looking at printed books, there's five printed books of those materials. Um, but those reading materials are delivered not only printed, but you can optionally get them in e-version e only. So again, one a uh, set of reading materials for each one of those uh, areas of the body of knowledge. Uh, there's about uh, north of 1,200 pages of content there. Uh, second is a set of online interactive study tools that allows you then to take yourself through the program. So this is, um, you know, takes that, that content and that knowledge gained in the reading materials and helps guide you through the program. 
So there's end of chapter quizzes, there's uh, checkpoints along the way, there's case studies, there's a glossary of terms, there's flip cards, all the things you need to really cement that knowledge gained in those reading materials. And then last is the uh, final assessments. And the, the, the final assessment is built into the same platform. So that's delivered on a website with a user ID and password. You need one to get into those and really take it on demand. So you can take that, that assessment when you're ready to do so and you can take it multiple times uh, based on uh, if you weren't successful the first time through. So that's broken into two parts. It's a knowledge exam. So pure knowledge recall from the content in the program and then an application exam or situational judgment. So how do I take that knowledge gain and how do I apply it to real world scenarios, which really helps me uh, kind of move forward with, with the program. So three unique parts that are bundled together in the uh, ProFM credential program to deliver this all in one system. Um, so then there's options for how you want to get this. Okay. So um, regardless of how you choose to move forward with the ProFM, you're always going to have those same set of tools that I just talked about. So the first, uh, the first way to go through it is self-study. So I, I take everything that, that was just discussed and I um, move myself through the program. Um, so it's self-paced based on your schedule. It's mobile optimized if I happen to uh, do public transportation or I'm at the soccer game or um, you know, out for a walk, I can study on my mobile device. Um, you know, so that's, that's, a, that's a good way to get through the program. Second is take that self-study and add some coaching. So Dale's gonna lead a session here on July, uh, July starting on July 8th called Coach Self-Study. So you know, you um, not only get all those materials that we already talked about, but then you get access to, the, to an instructor that helps you um, with key questions, key concepts as you move through the program. So there's the materials plus seven online instructor Q&A sessions. Again, that's starting in July 8th. There's a few spots available if you wanna get involved in that, so you can do so now. And then last is uh, an instructor-led course. So you take an experienced instructor uh, like Dale and you deliver this in a classroom and that classroom can be live in person or it might be online or it might be a blend of those. So again, the same self-study tools, but then the, uh, the additional benefit of the instructor and the ability to network and have peer discussion with your peers. That's a benefit for both the coached and the instructor-led course. So there's multiple options that really fit your learning style and uh, that's best for you. Um, if there's uh, groups of you that wanna go through it together, there is uh, price discounting for groups of two or more. Um, as long as we're talking about pricing, the pricing is uh, built such that uh, there's, there's two kind of versions, the online plus print. Uh, typical uh, price for that is 1,745 US dollars. Again, uh, contains everything there. Right, so reading materials, online tools, and the and the assessments. If you want just the e version or the online only, that's sixteen ninety five for attending this uh, webinar today. We'd like to make an offer that'll be valid through the end of July uh, for three hundred dollars off using the discount code WEB six two zero. We've thrown a lot of information at you. I want to point out, um, and I'll point this out again before we're done. There's a lot of really good information at profmi.org um, that'll give you additional detail. There's testimonials. There's a, a lot of good content around um, uh, kind of a high level that we've delivered to you today, um, which leads me right into those resource, resource links. We've got a great tool out there called Map Your Gap, which compares your current knowledge and skills to the ProFM body of knowledge, those 24 things. There's a free, uh, there's a guided tour, there's a, a reading material samples, there's white papers, um, a lot of good content in the free tips and tools section of the website. And then if you wanna get going, you can order uh, right there on the site. And I think we're um, right up against the time, but I think we'll at least uh, take a couple of questions. We certainly wanna be sensitive to your time, uh, but we'll just address a couple here. And again, we'll follow up uh, directly with some additional questions um, here going forward. So we'll follow up directly via email. So what, one question we've got, and Dale, I think this would be good for you to answer this, and, and I can certainly give a little perspective too on 
on this, but the question is, given the changes in the expectations of facilities managers, what would you say are the most critical areas of training from the 24 topics? Okay, I'm biased. Uh, I'll admit that right up front. But um, what I would focus on is um, is the, the management, the, the uh, um, uh, specifically specifically financial management and people management. Financial management from a standpoint of, of I've seen many, many FMs as they grow their career, they, they get to a certain point um, and then they're stymied because they don't they won't move that next um, level to understand budgets and financial reporting and those kind of things. Uh, and then also understanding how to manage people and interact. So those, that's what I would uh, say is, is, is my, uh, my key component to, to focus on. Yeah, I appreciate that, Dale. And I, I'll add to that, that I, that I think um, based on a discussion with one of our, uh, one of our instructors yesterday, um, that risk management piece has really uh, gotten into focus and, and they really felt uh, really better prepared for dealing with the pandemic and all the things around the pandemic uh, based on the knowledge and skills gained in that risk management area. And then, and then last, um, and I'm also biased, um, you can't understate the, uh, the critical nature of those cross-functional competencies and the ability to effectively communicate. And I, and I think so many things are resolved and you, you make so much great progress when everybody involved can effectively communicate around an issue, a problem, and collaborate and provide an innovative solution. So th those cross-functional competencies threaded across all those technical areas are a very key component of the program. Um, and we are now at 1236. I think we will, uh, <clears throat> we will conclude our program today. Uh, we gr uh, greatly appreciate everybody's attendance and joining us on this, on this webinar. Um, we will again follow up within the next couple of days with answers to your specific questions. Again, profmi.org, great resource for information going forward. And have a good rest of your Tuesday.